In this video, I'm going to show you how I go from having an idea for a t-shirt to a finished print ready file that can be sold on print on demand platforms using a combination of DAL E3 and Adobe Illustrator. So the idea I've got for a design is one that's aimed at mums for two little girls. However, the graphic is going to be sloth themed to make it a bit more unique. And I'm going to be using DAL E3 to create the initial graphic. And I'm also using POD Body, which will be linked in the description. I made a separate tutorial about this tool. I'm just going to open up the docs so you get a quick overview of what it actually does, because it does help with creating print on demand themed graphics, as well as giving you keywords, title, description, and even new design ideas. So this is a very, very cool tool for print on demand sellers that want to use ChatGPT or DAL E3. And we're going to start off with a very simple prompt right here, which says three hugging sloths, two girls, and the mum in the middle. I'm going to send off this message. POD body will now create this in a print on demand style. So you don't really have to add styling to this. You can, if you want a very specific style, but the default one works for me. So it's going to create one image, give us some keywords as well for the listing afterwards. And I think I'm probably going to regenerate this a few times just so we've got a few ones to choose from. So whilst I like this, I'm going to hit regenerate as well. And then after a few sets, we'll pick the best one. So a few minutes later, I think this is my favorite graphic out of the lot. I did generate a few sets and occasionally, as you can see right here, I also got a title, keywords and description, um, which can help me later on when actually uploading these designs. But I think the last one looked the best uh, even though the legs right here of the mum kind of look a bit weird and don't really look like legs, but I'll take that as a challenge and we can probably cover them up somehow in Illustrator when adding the text and the rest of the graphic does look neat and definitely has potential. So now this next step for me is going to be vectorizing this and I will probably remove the background in Adobe Illustrator and go from there with adding the text. So download the graphic over here with this button and let's move to vectorizer. So here we are, we'll leave a link to this website in the description down below. It is currently free to use. All you have to do is drag and drop your graphic into the site. It will quickly process and turn your low resolution PNG into a vector format, which um, is really handy because then you can scale it to any size without losing quality. So let's see how this came out. If we zoom in and the result is pretty much perfect. Very happy with that. And all we have to do now is hit download. I usually change the shape stacking to stack shapes on top of each other and I enable clip overflow. So these are my settings. I use SVG as the file format and then download this to my device. So jumping into Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to create a new document with these dimensions over here, 4,500 pixels wide, 5,400 pixels high, which is the standard t-shirt dimensions. I'm going to hit create right here at the bottom. So I'm using Illustrator because it is my tool of choice and I have been using it for years and years and years now. There will be a link in the description if you want to follow along, but there's alternatives to Illustrator that can also do vector editing such as Figma and Inkscape. But let's begin by importing the design we just downloaded from Vectorizer. So if you go to File and click Place, then you can open up any file from your device like this. And now we've got our vector graphic right here. I'd like to just drag it off the artboard to begin with so we can more easily uh, remove the background. And at the moment, everything is grouped. So a few things we can do is we, we could use the direct selection tool over here and just click on the background and then hit delete. And that already looks pretty decent. No random shapes that are left over. Maybe this right here, I'll just color this in black. But this was a pretty easy graphic to remove the background from. Sometimes it's a bit harder and you have to actually zoom in and fiddle around a bit, but I think I'm quite happy with that result. So let's take this graphic back onto the artboard and let's think about how to lay out our phrase because I'm going to add mom of two girls and I've got to cover up the mum's feet right here somehow because they, they look more like arms and she has got arms around the edges right here. So let's start off with the top, the easier part. Mum of is going to go up there. So let's start off with a type tool. Just click anywhere on the artboard, draw out some text. I'm going to type 
mom of in capital letters and find a nice font that kind of suits this niche or this graphic style. So the font that I've chosen is called Karak, Karake, something like that. I'm pretty sure this is an Adobe font that you get with an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, but I'm pretty sure you can find a lot of like rounded fonts that are bold like this for free as well. If you don't have the Adobe subscription, I do also have a lot of videos on my channel showcasing many different fonts that you can get for free for commercial purposes. So mom of at the top, let's duplicate this down by holding down alt, dragging it down, and then let's type out two to begin with, cause I want to cover this up somehow. I'm going to still amend that. But now we've got mom of to rearrange this all a bit. Let's move this to the front. So control shift closing bracket, bring this graphic above the text layer. There we go. Color this in gray. You'll see right there. I prefer to have the sloth sort of above the letter a little bit, even though that does make it harder to read. But we're going to give this a bit of an arch right now, a bit of a twist. So it's going to twist around the head essentially. So object, envelope distort, make with warp. There we've got the arc selected. That's perfect. Maybe turn this down a little bit, like 40%. Hit OK. Let's make this a bit smaller. Draw it down like so. OK. Okay, that's good. One more thing though, I don't actually like this gray. That was just for demonstration purposes. So now, if you wanted to change the color, you could click on this little symbol right here, edit contents, and that way you get back into the type layer and you can highlight all of this and then use the eyedropper tool with I or by hitting I on your keyboard and sample any color from the design. That's what I typically like to do to sort of stay within the same color scheme. It's just hard to, hard to know which one to pick sometimes. Let's just go with the purple for now. I think that works quite nicely. And then two. So this is where we have to kind of fiddle around a bit and be creative. So two is obviously not legible right now. I think maybe we're going to make that white and give it a stroke effect. So let's use the eyedropper, drop that on white, and then head over to the appearance panel just add a new stroke to this, increase the stroke size and drag this stroke down underneath characters. There we go. I think that already looks a lot better, right? Maybe increase it just a tad more. There we go. And now girls has to go at the bottom. Maybe we'll use a different font for that just to make it look a bit nicer, but we do need a bit more space, I think. So let's size this down, move it up a bit as well. And now I'm going to just create a new text layer and write girls right here and find a new font to match this or suit this right here at the bottom. Right, so I found a font called Lullabies that looks pretty nice and it's quite contrast to this bold font at the top. This one is more scripty, more handwritten and still very feminine, which is suitable. So you will notice if you've got a large artboard like I've got right here with thousands of pixels that eventually you can't increase the size of your font anymore, it kind of hits a hard limit. So in that case, you can just outline or expand the type like so. Go to object, expand, hit OK and then we can increase it further and like this. And let's see if we can experiment with the color right here. What does it look like with the same purple? Okay, maybe not perfect, but let's maybe change this right here as well because it's not actually matching the same colors as the design. There we go. Right, I think I'm starting to warm up to this design now. I just want to maybe use these heart shapes and scatter them around a little bit more to fill out some of this empty space. And I think then we've got quite a nice, easy to read balanced design for a mum of two girls. And let's start with this heart up here. As you can see, everything is still grouped. So I'm going to hit Control Shift G and then just take this heart shape right here, group the heart shape by hitting Control G. And then we can easily duplicate this while holding down Alt, drag this heart over here. For example, we can drag it over to the other side, rotate it, and maybe one more here. Kind of just have to mess around for a few minutes to see if you can get some sort of balance. And um, I think that looks pretty good. I don't have to go overboard. I think that's quite a good balanced design with nice, interesting colors. And it's going to work on other background colors as well. Like I could imagine a light pink looking quite good. Let's just test that right here with a rectangle. Yep, move that to the background. We've got a light pink color for the t-shirt working well. You can also probably have some light grays, beige as well. Try and get a beige right here. Yeah, something like that. Sandy colors could work well or a light blue potentially. So really nice design and I think it's quite suitable 
for a mum of two girls. The last stage would be exporting this. So I'll delete the background and then head over to file, export, export for screens. And then you've just got to select your folder where you want it to be saved into and the scale. So in my case, the artboard is the right dimension. So I can use the 1x scale. If you don't have the right pixel dimensions on your artboard, you can also change this to height, for example, and give this a specific height in pixels like 5400. And then the format should be PNG ideally. So once you're done with that, hit export artboard and you're good to go. You've got a print ready file with a really nice graphic that you can use on multiple print on demand sites. And a quick bonus tip at the end of this video, if you're looking for some high quality mockups to go along with your new t-shirt design, I would highly recommend checking out Placeit. It's one of my go-to platforms for great mockups. I'll have a link in the description to this homepage. And essentially what I would do in my case is type in mom t-shirt mockup and then hit enter and we've got 402 results. So that is a massive amount of choice. And by the way, they also have video mockups, which is super popular on Etsy and can help drive you more clicks to your listings and then in effect more sales. And I have a separate video tutorial showing you how to create these video mockups as well. But in this case, I'm going to use a static one. A lot of these have the child with a design on the t-shirt as well, which we obviously don't want in this case because it's just a design for the mum. But this one right here looks quite good. Child's t-shirt is covered. So let's click on this. Let's go ahead and click on upload your image over here. Click upload from your device and then just select the design file and place it in the right area. You can see a live preview over here on the right hand side. So in our case, the design is a bit big and a bit hard to display on this specific mock-up, but not to worry because if I hit crop now, then this image is not just going to upload onto our chosen mock-up, but also onto these on the right-hand side. So we get similar examples and quite a few of these actually look better. So let's click on this one, for example. Yeah, I think this one definitely has potential. I know it's not two girls in this image, but it is really close and uh, people will definitely be able to relate to this photo if they're looking for this sort of t-shirt. So you can change the t-shirt color of the girl right here. So let's maybe make that more of a girly color, something purple maybe to match the letters right here. And now I'm going to change the color for the mum's shirt as well. What could we do? Something sandy maybe, or a light purple, light blue something along those lines. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. You can still resize or readjust the placement by going into resize up here. I think we can make this a bit bigger and more centralized. Again, you do get a preview over here and then you can hit crop once you've finished. And I'm quite happy with that. Once again, we have got multiple other choices on the right hand side to go through. But for now, I'm just going to download this image right here with the button in the top right corner. There we go. It's now processing and getting generated in high quality, ready for your Etsy shop, your Shopify store or for social media marketing. If you're looking to increase your t-shirt sales in 2024 and moving forward, you would massively benefit from watching this video next, where I share over 30 print-on-demand lessons.